Hello everyone. In this video, I'll walk you through the assembly of our fraction collector, Colosseum. Before you begin, make sure you have the four 3D printed parts. The tube bed. The base. The base plate. And the arm. Let's start with the tube bed. On the flat side of the tube bed, you'll see two sets of holes for the set screws. Take an M3 hex nut and slide it into the square slot like this. Next, take an M3 hex screw and put it into the angled hole with an M3 hex key. Do the same for the other set screw. Now let's assemble the base. We'll be using our four M3 screws to attach the motor to the base. First, pull out the stepper motor wires through one of the openings on the base's side. Turn the base upside down and align the four holes of the motor to the four holes on the base. Notice here how you can slide the motor along these holes to adjust the distance between the motor and the center shaft. Insert the M3 screws into the four holes on the motor and tighten them with hex keys until the motor is just barely set in place. We'll need to move this later on. Now flip the base back up and take three small ball bearings and three short dowels. Insert the bearings into the rectangular slots on the top of the base and fix it in place with a dowel. The bearings should rotate smoothly. I recommend using something to push the dowel into place if it doesn't go in well. If the dowel keeps falling out, you can put a piece of tape over the hole for the dowels. Flip the base over again and locate the holes for the rubber feet to go in. In the rectangular part of the base, locate the two slots for the hex nuts. Next, screw the M525 hex screw into one of the rubber feet with an M5 hex key. Put this rubber foot into the hole where the M5 nut is and do the same for the other hole. Now screw the M520 hex screws into the remaining three rubber feet and attach them to the base. Tighten the M5 screws with a hex key until they are firmly attached to the base. Flip over the base so that the rubber feet are at the bottom now and insert two ball bearings to the circular slots. Now, let's get the base plate and place it inside the base so that the two circular slots for the ball bearings are facing up. Take three M550 screws and insert them into the three smaller holes in the base plate. At the bottom of the base, tighten these screws with M5 hex nuts to make sure the base plate does not move around. Place two ball bearings in the circular slots and align the base plate by pushing a rotary shaft through the center hole. Flip the entire base over 
and insert the two timing belt pulleys. Notice that the timing belt pulleys actually have different inner diameters, so one fits the motor shaft and the other fits the rotary shaft. Slide the motor towards the center rotary shaft and put the timing belt around the two belt pulleys. Tighten the set screw on the pulley of the rotary shaft. Gently slide the motor away from the rotary shaft until the timing belt is taut. Tighten the M3 screws holding the motor to fix the motor in position and tighten the set screw on the motor's pulley as well. If the ball bearings fell out, put them in position again. Now, take the arm, an M310 hex screw, an M3 hex nut, and a rotary shaft. Take the M3 nut and put it inside the rectangular slot. Next, take an M3 screw and insert it into the hole on the rectangular slot. Take a small ball bearing and put it on the extrusion of the bottom arm. Take the rotary shaft and insert it into the arm. For this next step, you might need a marker and a nipper or plier. Insert the rotary shaft into the ring of the torsion spring. On the torsion spring, mark where the little hole on the arm meets. Next, insert the arm and the torsion spring into the base plate and mark on the spring where the little hole on the base plate is. Remove the torsion spring from the shaft. With a nipper or plier, bend the torsion spring wire outwards where the marks are. You want the bent part to be close to a right angle. Try attaching the torsion spring to the arm and the base plate. If the end of the torsion spring wire is sticking out from the arm, bend the spring so that it does not scratch the tube bed during operation. Insert the rotary shaft into the center ball bearing. Take the tube bed and carefully push it through the shaft. It might be easier to lift the arm off the base plate to do this. Press down the tube bed until it touches the base and make sure the torsion spring on the arm is properly fixed onto the base plate. Also, make sure that the ball bearing on the arm is touching the spiral grooves of the tube bed. If everything is correct, then you will see the arm rotate with the tube bed as you spin the tube bed around. Tighten the set screws on the tube bed. Turn the device upside down and make sure the set screws on the pulleys are tight. And there you have it, a fully assembled Colosseum Fraction Collector. For more information on this project, please find our GitHub repository linked in the description below.